Here we are at Money 2020 in Bangkok, and I'm standing at the 20 fold booth. We're just about to interview a unicorn, so get ready. His name is Gavin Adam, and he is a CTO of Podfoods, a rather entrepreneurial bunch of guys based in Hong Kong, UK, Vietnam, where else? That's it. So tell me, why have you come all the way from the Brighton to Bangkok? Is that like sister twin cities? Brighton um, yes. Bangkok? Well, I mean, other than the obvious reasons, we're here to support one of our clients and uh, we've been building some technology for them in the form of 20 Fold. And what, what, what is, 20 Fold is a really nice name. What is the, what does it actually do? Well, we were asked to solve a problem. And the specific problem was, how do we get the broadest and deepest collection of fintech specific data in the world? Not just that it's going to be, oh, you know, more data. So in a world of haystacks and needles, let's get more hay. So how do we find those needles? And it's about trying to process that data into something that you can actually find and use when you're making things like investment decisions. Or let's say you're a fintech and you want to go into new markets or your investor wanting to invest in a new fintech. So give me, give me an example. I mean, you know, obviously uh, a lot of these fintech companies want to break out of their home markets, right? But they, they then, are they looking for, are they using your platform to find partners, to hire people, to raise money? If you're, if you're a fintech kind of, v, not the VC side, but the entrepreneur side. So from the entrepreneur side, it's really about, you think in the world of fintech, there's something like 22,000 investment organizations going in looking for said unicorn, right? They have to kiss a lot of frogs, but at the same time, those fintechs and those startups, they've got to go and find those right investors. Mm. Just because someone's got bags of money that they're running around with trying to spend, doesn't mean they're gonna spend them with them. Mm. So it's a case of, well, perhaps it's better for me to go and speak to five organizations who I know have invested in my market, or in my specific use case, or in the technology that I'm all about and all over, rather than going and trying to educate some new investor as to why they should be putting their money in with me. You know, that's really interesting because I, I know that, I mean, it's always troubling for a startup, the amount of time you have to spend knocking on doors to find the right investor. And it's very hard to get the profile. I mean, you can go to, go mad on Google, you can use a bit of the, like perplexity AI or whatever to search things. But I guess your proposition to those, those entrepreneurs is use our platform and you'll save time or you'll, you'll find the right people. How deep can you go in terms so, of understanding these investors? I think for the entrepreneur's mindset and use case, it's very much about how do you spend your time effectively. Yeah. Now, the question to ask is how long do you normally spend going out prospecting for investors? Yeah. And uh, there was one chap I was speaking to yesterday and he said, well, look, I normally spend three months putting together my, sort of my hit list of who I have to go after. Um, after the demo that, that he wit just witnessed in this case, well, you've just done in five minutes what I do in five, five months. Seriously? Um, it was about, that's the 12 yeah. people, not just companies, those are the 12 individuals I need to go off and speak to. And will, will he then know a little bit more about those individuals? I mean, what, how deep will the profile go of those individuals? Is it what so, they've invested in before or their kind of their interests? So you'll see that, background? you'll see the intersection point of where, what they're investing in yeah. and who they are. Yeah. So it'll be a case of, right, we know that that particular company have already invested in 12 other FinTech startups who are in peer-to-peer -peer lending in sub-Saharan Africa, okay. let's say. and. That way, you've got a, a clear understanding. Well, actually, that might be what they're yeah. after in terms of us. So basically, my, uh, Twentyfold is like the dating agency of Money Twenty Twenty in terms of because all the, all these event organisers have always tried to have you know apps etc. and they have networking areas and to kind of accelerate that that you know kissing the frog experience that you mentioned. Yes, I, I, th I think really the whole vision was you've got these great events where you've got people come to talk, to bi yeah. build relationships and do business, how do they have those conversations outside of the context of those events? Mm. And how do you keep those connections alive and how do you find new connections? Mm. And uh, the idea was, well, we've got all of this information about these organizations, we need to start harnessing that and pulling it together and then providing that as a service. So the, the, the problem is that you and I were talking about this earlier, is that there's a lot of AI being kind of thrown around across various startup pizzas across a layer of cheese, right? I, I'm, I'm really curious to understand exactly 
how you came in and have, have taken what's happening with algorithms, with uh, learning, with deep learning, with machine learning, to apply it to this? It's a, I think that's a great question. And when we were first brought in, it was a case of, right, we have a particular problem we need to solve for. We've got 65,000 companies we want to profile. We want to collate that data into a single place and provide a consistent editorial voice and lens on that, in, on that uh, fintech universe. Great, that's fine, but they wanted to create specific data points. Things like competitive advantage, what's the mission statement for the company, what's the problem they're trying to solve. And what you'll find is just such a variety of different pitch decks that get chucked around. And if you've got really, really slick marketing, which actually some of the best unicorns out there really don't have. They might have five, five slides, but a hell of a great idea. And when their founders are talking to investors, they get the cross message across. Not everyone can do that. Yeah. And if you've got people all around the world who are looking to try and find these unicorns, they want to be able to find a sort of consistent way of being able to apply a, sort of a, a filter over everything. So what you're saying is the you're using machine learning to create consistency? Is yeah. it kind of apples to apples as opposed to, it is, it's, is it like it's, a, a time shortener in terms of the material you have to look at or is it, so let me where put is it, the smart? Let me put it a slightly different way, which is that you know, in, in a previous life where I was again in the, in, in the in, I suppose, data intelligence space, yeah. often you'd find, in this, particularly in the world of retail, they'd buy retail, sell, retail data that was fairly made up and sparse because that was the only data. And it was a case of, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man's king. The question is, is that actually the king's eye in the first place? You know. <laughs> in this case, it was, a case, well, look, we've got all these various different data points. Is that comparable to that? How do we unify it, smooth it, and then compare it? So what we did initially is we tried to fix that problem with humans. So we built up a data team we had a load of very, very talented data analysts going out and collating these sparse data points, comparing them. Outside of the information that yes. Money 2020 had. So exactly. you were going out and looking for complementary. Yeah, so we were, I suppose, effectively replicating what's done in the investment cycle okay. for, the, for a large number of these banks and, uh, and VCs and private equity houses, where you'd have people doing desktop research, yeah. start with Google, tell me about this company, find out their financials, read various news articles now, tell me what's the problem they're trying to solve, what's their mission, what's their competitive advantage, and, and essentially create me a pitch deck. Now, the challenge there, when you've got 40 people doing that, you've got 40 different opinions. It's very subjective. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. And how do you then compare that person's viewpoint to that person's? Yes. You also have inconsistency in language. You know, if someone's got very eloquent, yeah. that will come across really well. Someone is just very factual, less well. So how can you harmonize all of that? Because this is much more of a narrative you're talking about than just raw data. So we failed on that, and we failed fairly quickly. I mean, it was a really interesting exercise, which we ran for a couple of months. But you mean the human side failed? Yes, the yeah. So we, we, we had this team running yeah. for a couple of months, and we got to about 5,000 companies, and it was a very, very slow, expensive process. And that just wasn't going to scale. Mm. And not only wouldn't it scale, it wouldn't be maintainable. Mm. Particularly if that FinTech universe then extends and expands Of course, global as, as it is now, right? Exactly. Because we <laughs> started off just off. looking at the States and that was a fairly, oh, okay, fairly yeah. rich data set, quite yeah. easy to do. When you go global, it's just you're lacking so much data. Right? Data sparsity, yeah. yeah. And then you lose that comparability. Yeah. So, you're like, well, there's all this really clever AI stuff. And everyone's talking about AI. Why don't we use that? And so we've, we, we built out our own large language models. We used various okay. techniques. Um, we, we built our... So you didn't go and dabble in the pre-existing? I mean, they've, we they've tried got everything. the funding and the backing and they've so, got the, the engineers and all the, the data yeah, to, and, to and that's train, the thing. right? But what we're trying to do is avoid any hallucination, right? You need to be able to make sure yeah. that when you come back with an answer, it's truthful. Sure. And anyone who's played around with things like ChatGPT, yeah. be careful, you do end up with, you know, there's, there's a lot of noise out there. Yeah. How do you avoid those hallucinations? If you're saying something's accurate, how can you verify that it's accurate? 
So we, we've tried a number of different techniques um, and initially for the first ingestion and, and data cycle and as part of this data pipeline, what we do is use um, uh, uh, a, a number of different interactions and uh, integration techniques. So we use RAG, we use um, uh, embeddings, and we did a lot of test and learn. And we've got to the point where it's now exceptionally accurate. So you've, in a way, to simplify in my kind of mind, is you're not, you're not relying on the existing LLMs that are out there. You, no. You've learned from there some of their processes so and applied it. I so you're not kind of sending off data to OpenAI or Llama and saying, right, churn this for us and we'll come back. You're we, are still... to a, we are to an extent. Okay. And so there's so, an ecosystem that you're tapping into. It's not like you've gone off independently and said, trash that. No, because you know the best way to stand on well, the best way to grow is stand on the shoulders of giants, right? Yeah. These guys have invested a huge amount, yeah. and the idea is we want to be able to use and harness that capability yeah. and that understanding of language in a way of being able to smooth and create this narrative. So the way we do it is we provide a very, uh, I suppose it's a bit like prompt in layman's terms, it's like prompt engineering. Okay. So we provide a payload of data, yeah. that's encrypted end to end, yeah. and it doesn't actually get consumed by the likes of a chat GPT. Okay. And we then come back with the answers, which we then store in our own data universe. Okay, got it. Got it. And then when, you, when you're in an event like this, what are the triggers that when, you, when, you, when you're there and you're doing demos, what are the, where do people's eyes light up? It's more a case of, when they see, well, it really depends on where their use is or what their use case is. So yeah. for instance, if you're a fintech startup and you're trying to do competitive analysis, you're trying to compare yourself to other people in, in, in the market, or you're looking to a new market, it's a case of, hold on a second, I've got all the things that I need now to be able to do a proper asset test of what we've got. That's certainly one really useful like, element. It's also quite useful for them to see how they are perceived by the rest of the world. Yeah, that's interesting because I, I thought of it more as a matching engine. But what you're saying, it's almost like optimizing a pitch as well because the, the investors going out saying, "Who else is out there in my space?" Yeah. You know, they come up on your radar. You then, how am I different to them? So in a way, it, it's, it's a research tool for them as well, right? They're not just saying, "Find me potential investors." Well, They're saying, "Help me get my story." better or more more suitable uh, certainly that's one aspect and, it, and I suppose the reason why we often start in that place is because yeah. it's human instinct who do you go Google on uh, who do you yeah, Google yeah. for you're, yeah. you're gonna Google yourself you want to yeah. see what people know about you yeah. so they like to start with oh what do you know about me okay. and sometimes it might be wrong because oh, guess what what's on the public web yeah, yeah. is wrong in which case they can update that yeah. they can claim their profile and there's an editorial process which allows a human in loop to be able to correct any of those sort of mistakes so what about from the let's take the you've spoken about the entrepreneur angle what about the investor angle i mean investors have you know vcs funds they they always have lots of analysts and research people and out here in asia you know they'll have pockets right they'll some will be part-time some will be full-time but they'll be they'll either be attending events and kind of sniffing around to see who's out there or they're you know doing desktop or but for them, it's a real challenge, right? Like finding the right. I was every time I talk to VC in Asia, they, they're either like don't like going out and mixing, so they, they just don't get the deal flow, right? So, what is it that they when they stand in front of your demo? What is it that excites them? For them, it's just it's having their own pet army of analysts instead of having a couple of assistants or people doing that that finding of deals. All of that filtering. And, and pre-analysis and pre-work is done for them. So, so it's like having an eight, like the kind of concept of agents, right? Yes. They're not Absolutely. really, you haven't, I guess you haven't taken it into the agent role. Or could you, is it, could you, if I was a VC interested in pharmaceutical stuff, can I train my agents so any time there's a deal that's, is it, is it that I think kind that's of level probably, of? That's probably the, the evolution of where we're going to. Okay. Um, and certainly some of the additional capabilities would be on things like knowledge graphs and, and other technologies. Yeah. That's certainly the direction it probably would head in. Uh, there's a danger, I believe, from a business perspective. As soon as you start doing that sort of matchmaking, you start becoming an advisor and you need to then have regulation oh, and, right, right, and, yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. So, 
So it's more of a media company than it is. A yeah, it's a discovery. A, yeah. It's a discovery tool. Um, and how is the money made? How does Twentyfold make money? It's a subscription it's, service. Okay. So, and I suppose the real key is what's the ROI for the user, mm. and if it can save them hours and hours of their time and they can focus on doing real work and they, they can filter out all that noise and go after the deals that they're after, it speeds, shortens up deal life cycles so they can get to those unicorns much, much faster. Um, they're all competing for the same thing. They all want the next PayPal. Mm. They all want the next, you know, the next Amazon to, Have to you, invest in. Have you, talking about that, is there like one, I know it's a very young offering, right? January this year, right? Has there been a discovery a unicorn I, discovered through your... I don't know whether I'd be allowed to know. say, but I suspect as much, yes. You suspect as much. Very nice. So, uh, you know, I have a quite captive audience through Web, Web Wednesday. Have you got anything you can offer us? Yes, uh, I'd say sign on to uh, 20 fold .com. 20 fold, okay. 20 Request a demo and uh, talk to the guys there. And I'm sure I say, I know Gav, is it like yeah. Gav 2024 so discount? <laughs> say, say, say that I sent them and I'm sure the business development team will be very, very interested in having a conversation and potentially providing a trial. Very nice. Thank you, Gavin. That's great.